Welcome back to Carolina Journal Radio. I'm Donna Martinez. If you've ever had surgery, you already know it's a maze of consent forms, insurance paperwork, and a lot of jargon that really isn't the easiest to understand. But one surgeon in Greenville, North Carolina, is taking the mystery out of at least one aspect of the whole ordeal. He is offering patients transparent, cash-based prices. Julie Havlack is associate editor of Carolina Journal. She's been reporting on this innovation in the delivery and cost of health care, and she joins us now to talk about it. Julie, welcome to the program. Thank you. This is our first chance to talk with you and hope it's the first of many times that you appear here on CJ Radio. Tell us about Dr. Wade Naziri. Who is he and what's he doing? He is a surgeon. He started out at the local hospital and um, many of his patients were getting uh, surgery, weight loss surgery, and that's often not covered by insurance. And so many of them were coming to the hospital uninsured. And if you're uninsured and coming to the hospital, the chances of you getting a huge bill are astronomical because unlike most people, you aren't, don't have an insurer protecting you for something called charge master rates, which essentially are set in a way that I've heard one surgeon compare, uh, compare it to the Arabian Bazaar. Whenever you go up as an American looking naive, um, <laughs> the sender, like it might be worth a dollar. He's going to r- rack up the price to a hundred and you We'll maybe bargain it down to 80. You'll feel kind of good about yourself. The insurer is the person who has the leverage to bargain that down. It's like being with the local. But if you're alone, odds are you're going to pay $90. It's going to be a 90% price inflation. And you're going to walk away not knowing what's happened. But you have a huge medical bill. And this was happening to his patients. He had one patient who paid... I want to say fifty-four thousand dollars for weight loss surgery. He provides the same surgery for less than twenty thousand. How is that even possible that he can cut the costs like that? Part of it is he doesn't have to deal with the middlemen. Um, he doesn't have to deal with insurers. He doesn't have that paperwork. And the other part of it is so much of that is actually just profit. Many of our local hospitals are sitting on billions in unrestricted reserves, and that's not counting the money they funnel into building projects, restricted reserves, and various foundations. Um, so essentially, he isn't making, he's not, he's, in his own words, he's not going to be dri- driving a gold plated Cadillac <laughs> doing this, but he tried, he, so he wanted to reduce costs for his patients. So he went to the hospital administration, he says, he offered a price. They wanted to charge a fee, a fa- it's called a facility fee. It's basically an overhead charge that the federal government lets them charge that was twice the entire price he wanted to charge. Oh my goodness. And then you add anesthesia and a surgeon, and again, the patient is looking at a huge bill. Um, So he decided to leave, start his own surgery center, where he does provide transparent pricing. Julie, one would think then that he's quite a popular guy in Greenville, North Carolina. How is this working out in terms of the competition? And are people like knocking down his doors to get the surgery? He, so he just started. So he's working on PR a little bit now. Um, but if you look at other similar cash-based surgery centers, like the Surgery Center of Oklahoma, um, they are not only nationally famous now, internationally famous, but they're also be, they're becoming sort of a force of negotiation. My own sister has to get surgery soon, and I've been looking up the surgeries prices on the Oklahoma Surgery Center. It's a good way to bargain your price down. If you know what someone can do the surgery for, you at least, once a huge bill comes, might think to question things like um, for a bag of saline, I've been looking through, reading through people's medical bills. It costs about a dollar and seven cents to reproduce. You wouldn't know that from the hospital charges. Some tra- will charge you forty-four. Some will charge you sixty-six. Um, and the, and the big thing is that particularly when insurance is involved, and you have that third party, nobody really knows what's going on because those of us who have insurance are used to paying a copay and a deductible, and then at the end of the whole process, you get a um, a partial bill. But the vast majority of it is taken care of by insurance, and and that makes it really kind of uninteresting to us to even understand. It's it's certainly complicated and many patients certainly don't know their way around what's happening. A lot of patients, it's beginning to change now. There's beginning to become some traction just because there's been such a focus on most people are having in medical debt. They're struggling to pay for their premiums, especially small business owners. Um, you know, Julie, I, I can imagine some of our listeners might be thinking, that sounds like a great deal. I'm sure he's a great guy over in Greenville and all that. But can someone who's willing to offer a low price like that, you know, what about the quality issue? Is there any concerns about going into someone because, gee, they wouldn't be doing it cheaper unless there was something strange going on? 
So the joke is that you should never get sick because you never know what might happen. Uh, medical <laughs> medical death rates from unexpected me- preventable medical mistakes are among the leading causes of death for Americans. So you should maybe have some hesitation. However, most of the studies have shown there's almost no correlation between quality and price. Because why would there be? Um, so much of what hospitals compete on because quality metrics are often, again, they're not transparent. Why would they compete? Oftentimes it's the lobby that matters. Um, If you read Unaccountable by Dr. Marty, he has a horrifying story about two doctors. One of them was known as the Raptor for his unfortunate personality. The other one was known as Hodad, standing for hands of death and destruction. Hodad was the charming one. Everybody All of the important politicians, because he was charming, went to see him. The raptor, who was famous for hands that were just glacial, didn't move, um, often ended up operating on the homeless. Again, there's... It's so hard to find quality. You're best off asking people in the healthcare field, like nurses, where they would go to get their surgery done. You know, Julie, you have been reporting for Carolina Journal on um, the healthcare beat, essentially, and you've obviously you're you're now becoming a wealth of knowledge about this. I can just imagine <laughs> if anything happens and I need some sort of service, I'm coming first to you to find out what's going on. But. Here at the John Locke Foundation, of course, we want uh, more transparency and want innovation, et cetera, to try to um, put some downward pressure on those prices and those costs. Are you finding that um, people are starting to understand that even if you have health insurance, it doesn't mean necessarily that your health care is going to be affordable? I find that most often it's less a People are beginning to understand in as much as they're afraid. So many of the people I've talked to have said they don't want to go to the hospital, they don't want to go to the doctor because they're afraid. And frankly, that's a tragedy because so many of the doctors that I've talked to don't even know about the bills. Um, They just mean well by their patients. And oftentimes they're in a system that's stacked against the patient and... And we know it can be even, good people in a broken system. Ex- speaking of broken system, we know that we've got to some doctors who are now starting to practice what's known as direct primary yeah. care because they want out of the insurance business. Have you been looking at that? I have been looking at that. That's fascinating. There's um, some really interesting cost savings that are beginning to come out where businesses are beginning to use those as an alternative. Um, it's certainly interesting. And what about telemedicine? You know, right now, as you and I are talking, um, the country, and in fact, the, the world is in the middle of the corona virus. And we're now starting to read stories about um, public health officials saying, hey, this telemedicine thing, this is a prime example of why we should be developing this. That's actually one of the best things about direct primary care doctors is they don't have so many of the administrative coding problems where getting charging for telemedicine has historically always been an issue. Um, but if you charge more, it's no longer a more affordable service. Um, direct primary care doctors are actually fascinating in that because many of them, the m- way they most interact with their patients is FaceTime and the telephone and texting, which you don't always find. Well, it's a pretty fascinating subject, the whole issue of health insurance, health care, and the costs surrounding that. We've been talking with Julie Havlak. She is an associate editor with Carolina Journal. You can read all of her work on this beat at carolinajournal.com. Julie, a pleasure. Hope to have you back soon. Thank you. Thank you.